O'Brien. Folks, this is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I believe he'll be back tomorrow. If you want to ask me a question, you go ahead and send me an email at jacob at tfnn.com. Of course, you can call our listener line as well. Let's take a look at what we got going on. Obviously, we're all kind of waiting with bated breath for tomorrow with the Fed, kind of see uh, which way this market's going to go. Pretty sideways right now, at least looking at the ES Mini, uh, trading just off about 0.06%. Still at 4,951 for that futures contract. Uh, but Russell down about 0.81%, trading at 2,006. Uh, NQs about down 0.7, 17,581. And the Dow futures are up uh, again slightly at 0.3%. Let's take a look at gold. Okay, we got a little nice move in gold in the recent days. Let's see if we can kind of keep that going, right? Again, I think a lot of this is going to hinge on what perspective the Fed's going to take tomorrow. You know, there's a lot of arguments to be made um, on both sides. I, I, I think probably what we'll hear is that they're still anticipating some rate cuts. But again, I think that's going to be, that horizon is going to be pushed out a little bit longer than people might hope. We'll have to see. If they really do give, uh, you know, a resounding dovish kind of answer, hopefully we can see the dollar go down a little bit see some upward movement in gold, see some upward movement in the market in general. It's inarguable that this market wants to go higher. I mean, we see that, right? And we are making all-time highs uh, in the uh, SPX, uh, all the indices. So, I mean, that is a good sign for the market overall. I think they just, they need to hear something uh, from the Fed that like, yes, uh, what you're hoping for is going to arrive. And it's going to arrive at some kind of determinable time. Uh, we're looking at crude oil up about 1.32%. Uh, obviously, a lot of stuff going on, again, with issues in the Red Sea. Uh, the situation was escalated this past weekend uh, when the Houthi rebels uh, actually drone strike, uh, drone struck one of our um, military installments that ended up uh, killing three of our soldiers. This is going to obviously increase tensions in the area uh, pretty significantly. Uh, furthermore, Saudi Arabia said that they are not going to increase oil production. We can talk a little bit about that uh, going forward. Obviously, that would alleviate uh, some price pains with it. You know, overall, however, I mean, we're still around 77.79 on this futures contract. The high on the yearly is 95.03. Uh, you know, we're not as low as we were in December and November, but this isn't a bad spot, uh, you know, overall, I would say. It's certainly not hitting at the pump like, uh, you know, we would expect with higher prices. Tesla, we cracked that 200 level on a pretty significant volume, trading down about 192.02. Uh, again, a lot of issues going on kind of with the outlook for the company in 2024. EV as an industry uh, in its whole is going to have some difficulties this year. Uh, Tesla is obviously at the forefront of that. There are some issues potentially with China entering the market in a bigger way than they currently do. Uh, Musk warned that they will you know, quote unquote, stomp the competition. Uh, Tesla trading at about 192. We'll talk a little bit as well about Neuralink, although that's not really tied with Tesla. It's still very interesting. And of course, it's kind of inarguable that people buy Tesla based on Elon Musk. Uh, now, of course, they seek a return with it, but, you know, they're looking at this kind of, kind of novelty that, that Elon Musk brings to the tech world, essentially. Still Dynamics, uh, up nearly 5% today. This is what I'm talking about with this stock. I mean, you get some wide moves on this. We're trading at 122.20. Uh, I think just last week when I was with you guys, yeah, we were trading about the 110, 113 level. About uh, December of last year, it tested that kind of last day with volume, did break through light volume again, traversing back down to that 110 level. Uh, and then it just, it really... It looks like it one's higher price. Now, this big jump up is on significantly lighter volume than some of its other upward moves. So I do see, again, a traversal back down in this stock, but this is what this thing does. Uh, now, of course, past performance doesn't indicate, you know, future, but um, this is this has established a pretty interesting kind of trading pattern, at least for the time being. The DXY. Still at 103 levels and really still kind of mid to high 103 levels, right? It is it is sticking at this 103 mark. Um, 
again, if this persists, it's going to be a slower moving market entirely. Uh, the Q's trading at 425, 25, Google 153, 38, Meta up about 401. Very nice crack over that 400 level. Uh, Disney, wow, 9735. We, we love to see that. Uh, <laughs> not just because that's my, my break even point, but um, <laughs> it just, uh, it's just good to see Disney moving up higher. So we're at 9735, Apple at 187.99, uh, and then just some of the other ones. Bitcoin, we'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, the German law enforcement actually seized about, two, well, first, let's say, uh, Bitcoin, I mean, wow, what a, what a move up. I think we're trading at 43,000 right now. Um, that was about a 10% increase from, from where we were trading uh, around that 39,000 level. The German law enforcement actually did seize nearly 2 billion uh, euros worth of Bitcoin. Uh, this was in the state of Saxony. Uh, this was basically seized. This is 50,000 Bitcoins. It was seized from two men. Um, age 40 to 37, they were running uh, supposedly a piracy website. Authorities allege the men bought Bitcoins from the money they earned from the portal. So essentially they had purchased the Bitcoin back in like 2013 and just held it. Um, I believe this was turned over voluntarily, which is quite interesting. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens in that area, right? Because you have just such a finite amount of Bitcoin. If that gets locked up in... Uh, you know, evidence. I mean, I, I don't know really what uh, the kind of protocol is for something like this, right? It's kind of interesting to think about. Let's take a look at SoFi. This is a Chamath SPAC baby trading at 841 today. So they had pretty good earnings. Let's take a look. Obviously, that's what this is, right? They were trading up something like 16%. They are down today. That's kind of just a correction from what I would see is probably an overbought position. But then also, People are probably just trying to get out of it. This thing with Sophie is people love buying at these like high levels, and they just they're waiting for a time just to kind of get out of it uh, when it inevitably goes back down here. I remember that SPAC for Sophie was actually the you know the story behind it, the lore that was being created by Chamath was so perfect. So many people bought into it. It went to a meme stock. I I don't know. I think it was trading. I think it opened something like twenty seven. Um, and then Jamoff got out of it immediately, and this made a lot of people angry. SoFi's been trading kind of at these lower levels for quite a while. We'll talk a little bit about them when we get back. We have Basil and Tim Ord on today, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss it.